The question is that the motion be agreed to. The Honourable Damien O'Connor. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And, um, uh, it's disappointing that, that we had a minister who doesn't know enough about it, really, introducing what is a very significant piece of legislation. Uh, although, I have to say, it, it is uh, perhaps unnecessary, given recent um, announcements, in fact, announcements one day after this bill was introduced into the House in, in December of last October, one day after the minister made this legislation redundant because he announced the need for a review of the whole legislation. So the last clause that the Minister read out may get to a point where they are no longer needed. In fact, the Minister thinks that may be the case now. Nonetheless, Labor does support the Bill on the basis that this continues to guarantee supply to independent processes. Now, those processes come in two forms. Some are exporters and some are domestic. And Labor supports the uh, provision of milk to those domestic milk um, industry players. Um, and I'll talk more about the exporters uh, in a minute. Mr Speaker, if I could just go back and give some background. Um, Labor, in fact, passed the legislation that formed Fonterra. Uh, two big companies and the Dairy Board were merged to be one company um, effectively taking, buying the milk, processing the milk um, and then marketing the milk offshore. New Zealand's biggest company, one owned by New Zealanders, there are not too many of those, certainly not in this size, uh, still owned by, by New Zealanders. So it is very important that we get legislation relating to Fonterra right. This is a small technical bill, I guess, in, 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 uh, strictly speaking, but it is one that, that goes to the heart of some debate within the industry. At the time of formation, um, Fonterra was 96% of the milk collected and processed in this country, a huge and dominant player. There were emerging, even just 10 years ago, a number of people uh, in, in the domestic market, um, better kinds of yogurt, more cheeses, um, a number of innovations that that the previous Labor government thought should be supported, aside from the big and traditional players like Cadbury's and then those who were supplying domestic milk um, at, at, uh, at that time. Two companies um, owned by the, the dairy industry, one of them forced to be sold, Goodman Fielder came in. Anyway, there was a need to guarantee them supply for New Zealand consumers. So Labor facilitated that through the dairy legislation. But things have moved on. The industry has grown significantly under Labor. I have to say our nine years in government saw very strong growth in dairy industry, um, and, and we welcome that in terms of export earnings. Uh, I think the previous speaker referred to 12.1 in exports, 21 per cent of our merchandise trade uh, last year, a big, big player. But we needed, in giving them that dominant position, to ensure that there was ongoing supply to independent processes. At that time, there were only a couple of other processes um, exporting offshore, Westland that remained independent, uh, Tartua, um, and there weren't too many other players. We have seen the development of Sinlay, the proposal around Miraka, uh, one owned by Māori um, and Corporation. They want to develop their own um, milk processing plant. The Russians have been down there in, in the South Island. Um, open Country Cheese, one um, set up and, and by uh, previous members of this House, uh, John Luxton and uh, um, uh, Wyatt Creech. We've seen them develop into competitive exporters of the same products as Fonterra. And the question has arisen in the minds of farmers and other fair-minded New Zealanders, why should Fonterra be forced to collect milk from farmers and then effectively direct the tanker to a competitor's factory where they will process the milk and then compete with them in the same markets offshore. So, so that has been an ongoing discussion and, and, and I think that, um, you know, that, that is something that is currently under review by the Minister. Should Fonterra be forced to supply their competitors? However, there is still a need to ensure that Fonterra supplies domestic um, and innovative um, processes of, of domestic products. And I just picked up today, Mr Speaker, a, and you'll get many of these articles coming up, 
um, a, a dairy industry magazine saying soaring milk prices hit cheese making. These are gourmet cheese makers who are struggling because of the international uh, increase in the price of milk and milk products. They are being forced to pay more for their milk. Now, I think that's fair. But the, unless we had guaranteed their ongoing supply, if they became, in, 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 if they were engaged in a, in a debate or negotiation over price, Fonterra could have effectively chopped off their milk supply. That is not good enough. They need to have some certainty in their business, and that is what Labor is supporting through the support of this bit of legislation, Mr. Speaker. But we do expect from the government the, uh, to. To, and, and Mr Carter is not here to indicate what is happening with the review. Are they likely to change the requirements to supply competitors? Now, strange as it may say, seem, Mr, Mr, um, uh, Mr Speaker, there, there are, or there is one competitor getting milk, but they don't really want it. And that may sound a little Irish, but, um, and with all due respect to my Irish heritage, uh, but that of the West Coast. In fact, they came to make a submission on the bill that was the most principled submission this House has probably seen for a long time. They said they thought it bizarre that Fonterra should be forced to supply their competitors. But as long as they were being forced through legislation, then Westland, as a competitor, was going to take that milk. And indeed, they're lining up to do that. So, so they, were, they were honest enough to come to Parliament and say, we don't think this should continue. But as long as Parliament um, legislates for it, we will t seize the opportunity. There are other competitors who, who are happy to take the milk, as much milk as they can for as long as they can, and then go out into the same markets, not always the same markets, but compete. The danger then, Mr Speaker, is that, as we see with the meat industry, people selling the same products into the same market from New Zealand have only one thing to compete on, and that is price. And we see price and value destruction in the marketplace, and the ultimate loser from that is New Zealand and New Zealand farmers. And, and that has been very destructive in the meat industry, Mr Speaker, very destructive in the wool industry, where, where competition offshore has undermined value developed, created by New Zealand farmers, by the New Zealand economy. So we, we don't endorse the continuation of that. That is why we support a review of the need of, through the DERA legislation, um, to continue to apply, supply the competitors. Mr Speaker, I, I just want to make a couple of points in this, in this third reading um, uh, about Fonterra itself. Um, th there is much happening in this area. Mr. And, and Fonterra is growing as a company. And um, there, was, there, there are requirements in the, in the Dairy Industry Restructuring Act that say if a farmer chooses to leave the company, they are entitled to take all their capital, that's the value of their shares, which are fixed value shares, to take that capital with them and to move off and supply a competitor. That creates what Fonterra uh, calls a redemption risk. That is that they might have to pay out a huge amount of money um, if farmers want to exit or if, through a drought, their production uh, drops drastically. I don't buy into Fonterra's argument completely. They are proposing a total recapitalisation of the company that will allow trading of the shares between farmers and then trading of bonds by outside investors. In my view, that opens up the company to potential uh, foreign and direct foreign investment and outside influence, and we could very well lose control of what is New Zealand's biggest company. That is a big debate that is, it, that is taking place at the moment. Um, I think that, that the, deal, the sweet deal done uh, by the National Party in Fonterra, that is that Fonterra would hold the price of domestic milk until the end of the election year on the basis that, that um, the government would get through the trading among farmers legislation has kind of fallen apart. Um, the, the, the Minister astutely has worked out that farmers don't actually endorse this trading among farmers completely. They are uneasy about some provisions of, of, of um, the, the proposals put up and, and checked by MAF, and so they want to back out of that. Mr Speaker, I, I think that uh, this House will see dairy industry legislation in the near future. I just hope that it supports 
upholds the New Zealand ownership of Fonterra um, and that indeed we get a fair deal for farmers. Uh, we pass the legislation. Sorry to interrupt the honourable member. Well. His time has expired. I call Shane Arden. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In the 30 odd seconds that I've got left before the dinner break, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, it's a pleasure.